Let's look into paper 51, May, June 2016. Question two. There are chemicals in the brain which give feelings of pleasure and reward. Nicotine in cigarette smoke is believed to cause addictions by increasing the secretions of this chemical in the brain. So this means that in the cigarette smoke, it contains a chemical called as nicotine. Nicotine is going to cause the brain to release chemicals. They will give, give the feelings of pleasure and rewards. And this is the one that causes addictions. That is why it is hard for the smokers to quit smoking. Research into the treatments of nicotine addiction was carried out using rats to test the effect of a drug, topiramate, which blocked the secretions of these chemicals. There's a drug called topiramate. It is going to block the chemicals. It will cause pleasure and rewards, and so it will low down the addictions. Topiramate was administered to the rats in saline solutions. Table 2.1 shows the treatment given to six groups of healthy laboratory rats. So you can see six groups of rats here, all six different groups that have different treatment. Group 1 serves as a control group. They are not given with topiramate but they, are, they have given the standard concentrations of nicotine. So this one, if you have nicotine without the drug treatment, the productions of the chemicals should be increased. In group two of rats, they are given with low concentrations of topiramate and also the standard concentrations of nicotine. Group three of rats given with high concentrations on top pyramide and given a standard concentration of nicotine. Group 4 are given with a high concentration of top pyramide without the nicotine. So this also serves as a control group where we only want to see the effect of top pyramide on the healthy mice without the nicotine substances in, in their body. Group 5 and 6 were pre-treatment with nicotine for 14 days to stimulate nicotine addiction. So this is the difference between group 5 and 6 and group 1 to 4. Group 1 to 4, there are no pre-treatment with nicotine. In group 5 and 6, they also have their own control group, which is the group 5. Group 5, there are no um, given of the top pyramide and with the given with the standard concentrations of nicotine. Group 6 are given with high concentrations of topiramate and with uh, con standard concentrations of nicotine. One of the chemicals in the brain associated with pleasure and reward is dopamine. The concentrations of dopamine was measured in all six groups. So the variable that is being measured here is the concentrations of dopamine. This is the dependent variable of this experiment. This also means that the chemicals that is looked in, in this experiment, investigated in this experiment, is dopamine. So those control groups that is uh, given with nicotine without the drug treatment, the dopamine level will be increased. That three variables which should have been standardized in these investigations. In these investigations, we only want to look into the effect of topiramate on the secretions of dopamine in brain, but not other factor. So other factors that are going to affect the dopamine secretions in rats need to standardize. Example, body mass of rats. Different body mass will secrete 
different level of dopamine. Each of rats gender of rats. We can talk other factors such as the species of rat. So the rat that is going to use in this experiment should be of the same species. Different species will cause different dopamine level secretions and it will affect the result analysis. Other things that need to standardize, including in each group of this rat, it should be have the same equal number of rats. For example, if group 1 have 20 rats, group 2 also must have roughly the same. You also need to standardize um, the concentrations and the volume of top pyramid or concentrations of volume of saline. You also can standardize the time between giving the treatment with topiramide and nicotine. Groups 1, 4, and 5 are all controls. Explain why these were included. Explain for control groups 1 and 5. If you look into this table, control 1 and 5 are the group of rats that do not have top pyramide administrations. They have the standard concentrations of nicotine injected. The only difference between this group 1 and 5 is group 1, there are no pretreatment. Group 5, they, are, they have pretreatment with nicotine. So group 1 is served as a control from for group 2, 3, and 4, and group 5 is just a control for group for, for the pretreatment with nicotine. So the functions of control group 1 and 5 is to show that the top pyramid is causing the effect but not other factor. Control group 4. Control group 4 were given with a high concentration of top pyramid, but they do not given nicotine. So they should have no uh, high level of dopamine secretions. So this is going to see the effect of dopamine on its own without nicotine. or to see the effect on the rat. Figure 2.1 and 2.2 shows the results of using topiramide on the dopamine secretions in the brain. So you can see group 1, 2, 3 here, and group 5 and 6 in figure 2.2. Figure 2.1 shows the one that do not have pretreatment with nicotine. Figure 2.2 shows the groups that have pretreated with nicotine that will have addictions, so the dopamine level will be higher. Rats pre-treated with nicotine was used as a model for human addicted to nicotine. In rats that have not be, been treated with topiramides group 1 and 5, the secretions of dopamine in response to nicotine is greater 
in rats that have been pre-treated treated with nicotine, group 5, than in rats that have not been pre-treated with nicotine, group 1. So if you look into group 5, the value here is 280. And if you look into group 1, it is around 64. So we say it's group 5, the top secretions of dopamine is higher compared to group 1. Calculate the ratios of increase in dopamine secretions caused by pretreatment with nicotine, group 5, compared to no pretreatment with nicotine, group 1. So this is equals to 280 over 64. Simple large ratios, which is 3508. State three conclusions that can be drawn about the effect of topiramate on the secretions of dopamine by the brain in response to nicotine. So you can look inside this figure, 2.1 and 2.2. Now in group one, it is the one that are not given with top parameter. This have the top parameter. Group three also given with top parameter. Group 5, not given with topiramide. Group 6, that is topiramide. So you can compare between the group that has not given with topiramide with a group that have topiramide, what happened to the dopamine secretion. So we can say it's the topiramide reduced to the top dopamine secretions. Next thing you can compare is between those that have high and low concentrations. Group 2 are given with low concentrations. Group 3 are given with high concentrations of topiramide drug. In comparison, high concentrations of the topiramide will reduce more of the dopamine secretions. And the third conclusions you can make by comparison between this figure 2.1 and 2.2, between the non pre treated group with the pre treated group. In non pre treated group, the reduction is between 64 minus 16. So the reduction is around. 75%. In the group that has pre-treated with nicotine, the 
the drug topiramide has reduced from 280 topiramide secretions into 120. So it reduced around 55, 57%. So we say the percentage reductions in topamide secretions is lower in pretreated group compared to non-pretreated group with nicotine. The researchers also studied the effect of topiramate on two other brain chemicals, noradrenaline and serotonin. They found that topiramate completely inhibit the release of noradrenaline, which is associated with pleasure and reward, stimulates the secretions of serotonin, which has been shown in human trials to reduce smoking and inhibit the secretions of dopamine. So that's why the researcher concluded that topiramide could be successful in treating nicotine addictions. Now topiramide not only reduces the topamine secretions, so it will lower down the pleasures and reward. At the same time, it also inhibits the noradrenaline secretions, low down the pleasure and rewards, so low down the addictions. It also increases serotonin secretions, low down the smoking, uh, habits and uh, low down the top of my secretion. So the reasons is here, it inhibits pleasure and reward. So it inhibits pleasure and reward. Smokers gain less from smoking, less enjoyment, so they become less addicted. And you can see that this topiramide not only affect on dopamine, it also affects on other brain chemicals such as noradrenaline and serotonin. And so it has uh, additive effect on suppressing the additions. 